Here's my latest ship build. Despite its compact size, this ship is actually a Class C ship and it has a fully loaded interior. It has every single workbench and it also supports the maximum number of crew. As long as you can get that crew count to 8, you can assign the maximum number for this current version of the game. It also carries 1,000 cargo or 1,500 if you have the payloads perk. I also installed the best weapons and I have enough jump range to get to any location even if you don't have any perks. So I'm going to give you a full tutorial of how to build this thing, but before I do, let's take a quick tour of the interior. We'll start our tour here in the cockpit. The tail cockpit has pretty nice visibility. Of course it has your standard cargo hold and a captain's locker. Behind this, we have our tile control station. Hop downstairs, and we have a hatch leading to our docker, and we have a Nova Galactic control station. This control station has a storage crate. It also has a galley. This door leads to our landing bay. Then we can head on through this Nova Cross Passage to the other side of our ship. Here we have our workshop, which has an industrial workbench, a weapon workbench, and a spacesuit workbench. If you open this hatch, we can enter the infirmary. Here we have a research lab and a pharmaceutical lab. So we have every single workbench on the first floor of our ship here. Now we can head out upstairs to the living quarters. Here we are in the living quarters. We have another galley. We also have a couple of bunk beds. There's even a bathroom. So the ship has a complete interior and it's still pretty compact. Before we get started on this build, let's talk about the prerequisites. Now, this uses a Class C reactor, so you will need rank 4 in your piloting skill. I also used a lot of parts that require starship design, so it's recommended, if you want to build it exactly like this, that you have rank 4 in starship design. Most of these parts can be purchased from your outpost ship builder, however, there are a few parts you'll have to go elsewhere for. The most important part is this Pinch 8Z reactor, however, you can use the SF-40 sheared flow reactor, and that can be purchased from your ship builder. You'll just have a little bit less hull strength. You will, however, gain a little bit of mobility back. So both are a decent choice. If you want to get this reactor beforehand, you can go to Neon. And while you're in Neon, you can also buy this Obliterator 250 MeV Auto Alpha Beam. We'll be using three of these. Neon also sells this Exterminator 95 MeV Auto Helium Beam. We'll be using three of these as well. Now you can buy Tayo cockpits from your shipbuilder, however the largest cargo capacity that they sell at your outpost shipbuilder is 260. If you go to the Ryujin Industries building in Neon and visit the Tayo showroom, you can buy ones with more cargo capacity. The one I used for my final version of the build has 280 cargo capacity, so you will use two additional mass and you'll gain 20 cargo capacity. This will get you to exactly 1000 without any perks, and if you have perks, it'll be about 1500. The only part that you can't buy from Neon or your shipbuilder is this Nova Cross Passage. In order to get this, you're going to have to go to Saturn's Moon Titan and land on New Homestead. The ship services technician there will sell this. However, you could just use a 1x1 HAB, so you don't necessarily need this. You could also use the HAB temporarily and go get this later. While you're in Neon buying your reactor and potentially the weapons, you may find that you're stranded and you can't get to your shipbuilder. Your ship might not even have enough grab jump thrust that it's valid. Fortunately, Neon sells the grab drive that we're going to use for this build, which is the Aurora 13G grab drive. This build will give you 28 light years of jump range without any perks, which is enough to get from any star to any star. The furthest jump I found is from El Chiba to Zalanzi, and that's 27.243, so this is absolutely sufficient to cover that. However, if you have astrodynamic skills, or you have Sarah Morgan as a crew member and she's functioning correctly, you may be able to get away with less grab jump thrust than what I have here. So if you already know what you need, you can take that into account and potentially buy a less powerful and lighter and cheaper grab drive. I should also point out that some of the parts that I use for this build don't unlock until level 60. Most importantly is the reactor, however you can use the SF-40 reactor that still doesn't unlock until level 57. You could potentially steal that reactor, 
by stealing a Crimson Fleet White 3, or a Space or Hyena 3. But in any case, if you want to build this build exactly the way I built it, you're going to want to wait until level 60. This build also costs about 406,000 credits, and that's if you have full commerce skills. If you don't have full commerce skills, it's going to cost about 508,000 credits. Now that we've gotten all the prerequisites out of the way, and I've told you where to get all the parts, I'm going to show you how to build this thing step by step. I'm going to start with this Shipbed 200 landing bay from Tayo. Behind that, I'm going to add a Nova Galactic piece. It'll be a 2x1. We're going to use the control station. We're going to use another control station. And for this one, we're going to use the Tayo piece because we want the rounded look on top. So go directly above the Nova Galactic control station. Now I'm going to add the Tayo Shogun cockpit. If you didn't buy this, from the Tayo showroom, you could use this Demio Enhanced cockpit. You're just going to lose 20 cargo capacity. This will go directly above the landing bay. Now I'm going to add the Pinch 8Z reactor, which I've already purchased from Neon. This will go behind the control station and the other control station. I'm going to add this Nova cowling and place it directly on top of the Tayo control station. I'm going to use another variant of this, use the next variant twice to get to the rear version. I'm going to snap that directly behind this. This is necessary because this reactor doesn't have any rear attachment points. We're going to need the lower attachment point on this cowling to attach our engines. There are a variety of engines that will fit on this build, however, if you want to obtain the maximum speed possible in the game, you're going to have to use this White Dwarf 3015 engine. We're going to use two of these on each hull. In order to connect our hulls together, we're going to use this Nova Cross Passage. We're going to attach it to the front attachment point on this Nova Galactic control station. Our next HABs will be Hope Tech 2x1s. First we're going to add this workshop and we're going to snap it to the back attachment point of the workshop where it connects to this cross passage. Behind the workshop, we're going to add a Hope Tech Infirmary. We're going to add this Hope Tech nose onto the front side of this fuselage. Now be careful, there is another nose that has a squared off end. We want the one that's rounded on both sides. Next, we'll add this Tayo Cowling. This will be placed on top of the front snap of the Hope Tech workshop. So kind of keep the symmetry with our cockpit. Of course, we can't have two cockpits. This will help us complete the look. Now we're going to add another Tayo 2x1. This will also be a top A, just like on the other side. We're going to use the top A because it's smooth and it doesn't have any additional snap points, which kind of ruin the flow of the ship. We don't really need them anyway. So this will go directly behind the Tayo cowling on top of the workshop and the infirmary. Next, we're going to add our grab drive. I'm going to use this Aurora 13G grab drive. It offers 33 grab jump thrust. However, if you have the astrodynamic skill leveled up, this may be overkill, so you could potentially get away with a lighter grab drive. This will be sufficient to get to you anywhere you need to go though, even if you don't have any perks. For the engines and the cowling, we're going to do the same exact thing we did on the other side, so you can just duplicate this whole group of four items. Next, I'm going to add this Stroud Engine Bracer A, which is a purely cosmetic addition, but it helps make our ship look like it wouldn't fall apart. I attach this to the lower snap 
on the reactor, and it also attaches to the infirmary. I'm also going to add a porthole. The porthole will be attached to the front inside snap of the Hope Tech Infirmary. Now this is actually pretty important because if you don't add this porthole here, it's going to actually build a ladder between the all-in-one berth and the infirmary and then you're going to have kind of a convoluted passageway through your ship. However, if you add the porthole, it's not going to add a ladder connecting this all-in-one to the infirmary and instead you'll have a door connecting your workshop to the infirmary. This is actually pretty handy because all your workbenches will be located in the same area. It's also kind of cool that you can sort of seal off your infirmary from the rest of the ship. For the shield, I'm going to use this 28T Defender Shield Generator. This is potentially the best shield generator in the game. There is one that offers 1600 max health, however, it only has a 5% regen rate. This one has a 7% regen rate, so this will actually restore 105 health per second instead of 80. It's also significantly lighter than the other shield, so this is a really good choice for a ship where weight is important. This Assurance SG-1800 shield generator is considered by some to be the best in the game. It does have the greatest max health of 1600 compared to 1500. However, with a mass of 160, it's just not a good choice for a build where we want to keep our mass low to maintain our mobility. So I'm going to be using this 28T Defender. So let's add some landing gear to this ship. I'm using the Tayo Pinpoint 3G landing gear. There's a front version, there's a middle version, there's also an aft version. Now I'm going to leave some space here so I can add a fuel tank, but we're going to keep the same landing gear setup on both sides. On this side, I kept a space open so I can add a cargo hold. I use this Galleon S201 cargo hold. This has a cargo capacity of 720, which combined with our cockpit will give us a cargo capacity of 1000. And if you have all the perks, you'll actually have a cargo capacity of 1500. For our fuel tank, I'm going to use this H30 Atlas tank. This single fuel tank is pretty compact and it offers 400 grab jump fuel. We still need to add a docker. So I'm going to add this 100 DP slim docker. This is a top docker, but if you flip it, it becomes a bottom docker. I attached it in the back of this Nova Galactic control station. I didn't want to attach it in the front just because the little stubby ladder that sticks out would kind of be in the way of the cross passage and the walkway. Although you can certainly still get around it, so it doesn't really matter where you put it. The last thing our ship needs is some weapons. First, I'm going to install these Horizon weapon mounts. You can attach these to the side of the reactor. You can also attach them to the side of the grav drive. Finally, I'm going to add a few more up front attached to our landing bay and to our workshop. Since we're going to have the highest top speed of 180, we're also going to have really good mobility. Didn't really feel the need to use turrets, although there are certainly some good turrets. The Obliterator 250 and the PBO 300 Auto Alpha turret both come to mind, but I'm going to be using pilot controlled weapons. Now if you look at the numbers in the UI and you calculate which auto particle beam has the best DPS, this PBO-175 auto helium beam will come out on top. However, if you watch any of my other videos, you know I do a lot of testing, do my own research, and I play this game a lot. I've actually found out that there are some weapons that are even better. This Exterminator 95 MEV auto helium beam is one such weapon. Three of these will actually do better burst DPS than four PBO-175s. In each case, you're going to be using 12 power, which is the maximum amount. These also do more damage with their initial charge. They're going to 
fire shots for a slightly longer period of time, and when they fully deplete, the recharge takes about the same amount of time. This means that they have a better DPS over a short time frame as well as a long time frame. They also have slightly more range, which is a nice bonus. These Obliterator 250 MEV Auto Alpha Beams actually do even more damage with energy stored in the batteries than the Exterminator 95 MEV Auto Healing Beams. The UI indicates that these will have lower DPS due to their fire rate, but my testing actually shows that these empty their entire battery into the enemy even faster than the Exterminator 95 MEV Auto Helium Beam can. The only disadvantage to this weapon over the 95 MEV Auto Helium Beam is that this requires more power to charge once the battery has been depleted. For this weapon, a power setting of 7 is actually comparable in recharge time to a power setting of 6 for the 95 MEV. So the 95 MEV might actually have a little bit better damage over very long periods of time. However, this is going to have better burst DPS. And that's pretty important because you may be able to finish off all your enemies before you even deplete the initial charge. The only other downside of this weapon compared to the 95 MEV is that it's class B, which means you can't install on every ship. However, that's not a problem for this build because we're using a class C reactor. The 250 MEV auto alpha beam can also fire a single shot at a time. Most auto particle beams fire in bursts of three. However, being able to fire a single shot is particularly advantageous if you're trying to board a ship. This way you can target the engines and you can avoid doing more damage than you intend to. There is one more auto particle beam that would be hard to not mention, although I won't be using it for this build. These Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projectors have similar DPS to the two that I just showed you. However, they do have a little bit less range and their initial charge will deplete a little bit faster. You also won't be able to buy these unless you've joined the Vanguard and completed the first mission. The upside to these is when they're fully depleted they're going to charge faster than any of the other comparable weapons. So over an extremely long period of time these will actually give you the best DPS. However, I decided not to use these because most of the time you're going to be able to finish off most of your enemies with a charge stored in the battery. So you don't really need to worry about how fast their recharge rate is when they're fully depleted. The other downside to these weapons is you're going to need to install six of them to achieve their maximum damage. This isn't necessarily a problem for every build, but we don't have a whole lot of available weapon mounts, so there's just barely enough space to install these if you want, and I think it looks okay with six of them installed. They don't quite look like they'd shoot each other, not that it matters because if you shoot your own ship with your own weapons, the projectile would just pass right through without doing any damage. Of course, that doesn't necessarily look cool. So you can certainly install six of them if you want, and they'll fit right here. It's just not what I decided to do. Besides, I like the fact that both the particle beams I chose to use have a range of 3250, so both of my particle weapons will come into range at the same time. So now that I've explained why I chose the particle beams that I did, let's install them. I chose to install my Obliterator 250 MEV Auto Alpha Beams on the right side of the ship. I did this just so I could map them to my right trigger and kind of make sense when I was using them. I'm playing with a game controller, but you can of course install them on either side. Whatever your preference is doesn't really make a difference. And then I'm going to install these Exterminator 95 MEV Auto Healing Beams in the same locations on the other side of the ship. So I'm going to attach one to this front weapon mount. And I'll attach two to these aft weapon mounts. For the last weapon, I decided to use a missile launcher. This CE-59 missile launcher is probably my favorite missile launcher in the game. This 280C appears to be better when you look at the stats. However, what the UI doesn't tell you is how many shots you're going to get before your initial charge is depleted. The 280C will only give you two shots, and you're going to have to wait for it to charge, and missile launchers charge pretty slowly. This CE-59, however, will give you four shots before its initial charge depletes. The four shots from the CE-59 will do more damage than the two shots from the 280C. 
There are actually a few missile launchers that hold 6 shots. There's even some that hold 10 or 14. If you really care about maximizing the amount of damage stored in your initial charge, the Hunter Mag 450 stores the most damage. However, it fires 10 shots, so in order to do that damage, it's going to take a long period of time. It just doesn't do as much damage per shot as a CE-59, so you're going to have a hard time doing the damage quickly. So I'm going to install four of these because it takes three power, and it's pretty much always best, especially with weapons that store a charge, to just install as many as you possibly can. Now we still have one error, and that's because our weapons aren't assigned to a group. I'm going to put my Obliterator 250 MEVs on my right trigger, my Exterminator 95 MEVs on my left trigger, and I'll put my missile launchers in my final weapon group. Now the build is nominal. The only thing left to do is give it a coat of paint. I think this build looks particularly nice if you paint the more mechanical components a dark color. It's also handy to paint this Hope Tech nose a color that matches this Hope Tech workshop because it'll really blend right in. You can of course paint this thing however you want. I just figured I'd give you a couple quick tips. Another tip is you can select everything all at once and then you can just deselect the components you don't want to paint. One last thing I'll point out is that you can rename your ship by opening the flight check menu and you just need to press the rename ship button. While I am pretty bad at grammar and spelling that's not what's going on here. This is just a bad pun, so, you know, I called it called it the duelist. But of course, you can give it whatever kind of name you want. Hope you enjoyed this build tutorial, and uh, thanks for watching my video. If you have anything interesting to say about this build, just drop a comment, and uh, I try to reply to as many of them as I can.